Greetings, Marshard. Welcome to episode 30 of my Industrial Revolution 3 playthrough. In this episode, we are going to plan for ore washing. Enjoy. Okay, we've basically done all of the resources that we have access to. And the robots are reasonably close to being done with these modules. Just got 14 of them left, and then we'll just uh, continue. Just doing a rough coverage network of the whole factory. In fact, we might as well get that started now. Oh, we move so fast. And I'm actually thinking we should probably just pick up a couple of these RoboPorts. It'll just make expanding a little easier because we have some machines up there. And we'll want to place it in such a way where we try to maintain a grid if possible. Not that it's really going to matter all that much. But that basically gets that covered. Our tree farms here do not take modules. And it's great to see that we're using up all of that ethanol for actual power now. And pretty much every log that comes through is getting consumed. Let's make sure we've got all this stuff in here. We actually don't. Where we do have the crushers. However, we're going to want to have the chemical plants as well. And actually, this is one that is a little different. We could put a speed in there, but if we don't actually need them, then we don't need them. So this is an interesting situation where actually just the two modules is fine. And if we really wanted that productivity, we can throw it in here. But these are unlimited resources and really don't need them. So for now, I think we'll just leave that spot open and just say we want to have two efficiencies in there. And we could leave the tier one modules in there, but we might as well upgrade everything since we are here. And probably shouldn't be using my own robots for that, but oh well. We have speed modules on all this stuff, but we probably don't need them anymore. So I think it's safe to basically just convert everything here to efficiencies. Although interestingly, I did not realize you could put productivity modules in the brick makers. Okay. I don't really see that as being valuable right now though. I kind of want to just leave them in there to remind myself that they can be placed because that is surprising to me. Let's just add in the electric derrick where we would want to have speed modules and the scrapping machine which for now can just be efficiencies. And that one's already been upgraded. We really don't need to cover the entire factory. It's going to be very sporadic but there's just no point in doing full coverage with these because once we get the better robot ports it'll be so much easier to do the same. So there's kind of no point. Although that said, if we do see a place where there is a single gap in there, we might as well just fill it in. So lots of machines to upgrade. Everything there. All of that. Just want to keep the robots and the factory busy. There we go, that's quite a few modules, 260 of them. Well, from here, really, the main thing we need to work on next is a big one. It's ore washing which is going to dramatically change the way that we process ore, and it's also going to introduce a lot of new ores. So let's talk about it here. It unlocks the ore washing plant, which is a steel building, and the way that it works is you put in crushed ore and either cold or hot water, and it will process the ores in different ways, and it will create dirty water as a result, and that dirty water can go through a polluted water cleaner, which will clean up the water, give you some byproducts, and allow it to be mostly reused. So the first recipe here is the cold water version. So you see that it requires that the water be under 60 degrees Celsius. You put in crushed ore, and you will get out pure copper. You'll get a 10% chance of a pure nickel and 10 polluted water. And if you take that pure copper, you will get two ingots out of it. Whereas the crushed ore is a 50% bonus, the washed ore is a 100% bonus. And also the recipe pollution goes down from 100% to 75. So that's definitely better. That will increase the material efficiency by quite a lot. And also, this is how you get nickel. You can wash tin to get lead and of course smelt it. You can wash iron to get chromium. You can wash gold to get platinum. And then after that, you will have those rarer ores which you can then turn into things. You can take pure lead and the recipe is the same as the more common ores where it doubles the efficiency of it just by default because that's how it comes. So one lead goes in and two lead ingots come out. And if you have lead scrap, you could of course turn those into ingots and it unlocks the lead plate. If you have nickel, you can turn it into nickel ingots and nickel ingots can become nickel pellets. If you have chromium, you can get chromium ingots and right now those aren't used for anything. If you have platinum, you can get platinum ingots which can then be turned into platinum pellets. 
And finally, with that polluted water, you can clean it to get most of it back. So 60 water goes in and 50 water comes out. It will give you a 10% chance of getting each a gravel, silica, and sulfur. And you can send those to wherever in your factory that they're needed. And that creates a circle. However, this is only one part of it because it generates the optional ores very slowly, only at a 10% rate of the ore that it spawns from. However, it also directly links the two ores together. So in other words, you can't produce copper without making nickel, and you can't make nickel without making copper. And using these methods, that ratio is 10 to 1. So we'll hit the research, and you might as well keep going into ore washing too, because it's directly related. And this unlocks the electric boiler, which is one of those other things we needed copper rods for. <laughs> Basically, it just boils water, and you can use shift E to toggle between hot water and steam. And of course it has to say not suitable for power generation, so thank you, it's not an infinite power loop. And how it works is that if the water is below 90 degrees Celsius, it will heat it up to 90 degrees Celsius. And regardless of the temperature of the water, if you want to turn it into steam, you can do that. And 165 is just the standard steam temperature. And then it unlocks the hot water washing recipes for the ores, which instead of getting a 10% chance of the byproduct ore, you get a 50% chance. And you can do it with copper, tin, iron, and gold. And note that the recipe requires that the water be above 60 degrees, but the boiler makes 90 degree water. What it means is that the boiler's water is much hotter than is minimally required. And that will come back in a little bit when we plan a build, but just keep in mind, it doesn't have to be at the maximum temperature of the boiler. So you might think, oh, we should do this all the time because of course this creates more ore. Why get 10% nickel when we can get 50%? It becomes a problem if it's too much ore and you can't get rid of it because we don't have a way of dumping these ores besides actually consuming them. So if there's no practical way of consuming the nickel, we actually don't want to use this method because we will just clog up the factory. So you have to use this method in conjunction with this other method here in order to balance the two out. So you could use cold water, and you see the recipe is below 60 degrees, to get the 10% rare ore output. Or, if you're running low on something, you can crank it up to 50% ore output. And you can cycle between these two methods. And it's technically related with the geothermal exchange, if we really wanted to. But for now, we'll set up this other system here. And of course, it unlocks lots of things. But none of it does us any good until we essentially handle this. So we'll let that research. Looks like we are slowly using up that extra sulfur as we acquire it. So we are metering through it slowly. And while we wait on this research, we should uh, probably start planning things. This is going to be a little annoying because we don't have them unlocked yet, but that's fine. And we'll need to decide exactly what kind of output rates we want to plan for. If we look at, say, iron, it's assuming 10 ore a second as an input. So we certainly could crank it up higher, but we also need it for steel as well. Although we have these two setups in different spots, we'll probably end up combining them with our new plan here. But when you think about the input ore we could have, essentially the practical limit for our current state of the factory is 30 ore a second, or one belt. We certainly could do more than that, and we could build big enough mines to handle substantially more. But when you think about what is easy, and also what creates a sufficient expansion to our factory. Having 30 ore input makes sense. And that's input ore, not output ore, because we have different methods of making ore and they vary in their yield. We should probably just plan based on inputs instead of outputs. So hopefully hell mod works here. This is going to be a big one. I'm not sure which one it would be. Is it locked recipes? Looks like it is the disabled recipes here. Let's just start with copper since that's the first one. And let's plan for having our output of ingots. And there's some new buttons here, so let's see if we can figure it out. Where we actually want to base it based on the input. But for now, we'll go down the line where we have to wash it. And we'll have the choice between the two. Let's do worst case scenario that we want 50% of the nickel output. And then that will require some crushers. So, can we switch this to input? We can, but... Well, it has this new button setting it between consumer and producer, but it still doesn't let you select the amounts. So I'm not sure where they're going with this, but 
I can tell that slowly Helmod is becoming more functional again, but the math is easy. We would want this to be 60, so we have our 30 input of copper. And yes, it's going to be a big setup. We want to try to make something that we can copy, because essentially all the different ores are exactly the same. And we definitely want this to lead us into the future. Another reason why we have no issues with 60 ingots is because we haven't even used ingot stacking yet, which compresses them by four. So this would only take one yellow belt to have 60 copper ingots. So of course the gas furnaces don't get any modules. However, the ore washing plants do, and the crushers do. And we're at that point now where we can start putting speed modules in, and they start making a difference. But would we want to? We can get this down from 48 to 30, and this down to 15. However, that increases the energy consumption to 16 megawatts, compared to just 12 if we didn't. And three if they were efficiency modules. So even though the setups are gonna be big, I still think we're at the point where using those efficiency modules are the best choice. I really don't wanna waste electricity until we have nuclear power and we have so much electricity that <laughs> we can just spend it on whatever we want to. Until that point, I still want to try to be efficient. Besides, big factories are more interesting than small ones. So we have a setup here that takes 30 copper ore and then crushes it in 48 of these electric crushers, and then that 30 ore gets washed in 24 plants, and then that 30 ore goes into gas furnaces. And actually what's funny is you can actually process both the copper and the nickel in the same group of furnaces because the recipe will just switch depending on what the input is. So you actually don't even need to separate these to different belts. We should be able to, if it's not broken, just add in the recipe here, which takes nickel. Unfortunately, it's not letting us do it. I wonder if we have to drop it down a block. So it seems like that'll let us select it. But can we link it? There we go. So we had to set it to product input and producer block, but it let us do it. So Hellbot is slowly starting to become useful again, but just kind of figuring it out and the different changes might take a little while, but nonetheless, it is now linked. So if we change this number, all the other numbers change too. But basically, we would have 48 gas furnaces for this nickel, and then 96 gas furnaces for the copper. And we would just combine them all together into one big block. This is going to be pretty big. Second guessing if I really want it to be that big, considering all of our other blocks that handle a lot of stuff are only about 24 there. So we would be going from 24 to more than 100, but we're definitely at the point now where we're finding ourselves starting to run out of various resources. I mean, it's keeping up mostly, but like you can definitely tell that we are very close to the output limit on a lot of these. So we just need to expand, basically. Also, one other thing we need to consider is what happens if we are overloaded on nickel. And by that, I mean both the hot water and the cold water versions both create nickel. So if we have no room for nickel at all, it means we also need to have a backup in order to process just the crushed copper into the ingots. So a lot of this is going to be interconnected, but at the same time, because the furnaces don't care what they burn, they can burn the pure copper, the crushed copper, the pure nickel, it's all the same. Just throw it in there and ingots will come out. That we can actually just use logic and connect these all together and not have to have separate builds for every item. So hopefully that makes sense. But there's some other aspects of this that we need to take care of. Now, first of all, the 18 natural gas a second, is that a reasonable amount? Well, it's the light oil cracking that makes the natural gas and it makes 87.5. So we actually have a pretty big peak on how much natural gas we can make. Plus, there are other methods of making natural gas which we will soon have access to. But basically, 18 a second is quite reasonable. So the only other thing we need to do is produce the hot water or the cold water, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But in order to run this on hot water, we will need to have four electric boilers. And that seems fine. They can't use modules or anything, which I approve because it'd be kind of broken if you could uh, boil water for less power than you put into it, which Sounds like angel bobs to me, so <laughs> I approve of that change. That we basically have a build now, and unfortunately, it's enormous. Oh, one other thing we do need to handle is the polluted water. So how can we do that? Do we click here? There we go. We clean the water, 
but it's in the wrong spot. So we have to push this down. And we will need five water cleaners for this. And we can put efficiencies in there, at least one, to knock the number down a little bit. And that will produce a small amount of other resources. And actually this is incorrectly linked because we want it to be linked to the polluted water. And it isn't actually linking, so perhaps it isn't working after all. There we go. A lot of clicking, but we got it to 300 because what it was doing was cleaning some infinite polluted water in order to make the regular water we need. But we actually wanted it to just clean the polluted water. And now that it has, it's giving us back 250 water, which means we need to add 50 water a second to this whole process to keep it going. So I believe it is correctly linked now. And that research is done. So I guess we'll just uh, keep upgrading the robots and letting the factory get better modules. Meanwhile, we have a build to do, which means a shopping list. 144 gas furnaces. I almost feel like these should be automated now. I mean, we have robots, so they would make construction much easier. Well, if we put it right here, it would be next to the things that it needs. The only one it wouldn't have is the silicon carbide bricks, and that would be an annoying belt to have to send up here, but that would make it so we didn't have to at least handcraft all of those. And I feel like because we have robots and because they can build things automatically for us, that we should now kind of lean into the automatic production of some of these buildings. It doesn't have to be all of them, but certainly something we're going to build you know, 144 of, we definitely want to automate that, and some of these buildings are going to start getting in the way of picking up our items, but at this point, I don't think we can avoid that. I don't want to have, like, just an enormous amount of these. So how about, let's just do 10 for now. It's okay if it builds them a little slowly. Just as long as we're automatically making them. That's kind of the amazing thing about automation. Is that it kind of doesn't matter how long it takes. The only thing that's important is that you aren't the one doing it. So I guess we can just start throwing the bricks in now. He uses a lot of them very quickly. And it looks like one of our drills is already out on our tin. And definitely we're already at 44%, so that mine is going to be gone soon. But we've got another one right here. Well, things like electric boilers are easy to make, but what about the crushers? Because we still need a lot of those too. Frames, motors, gears, and pistons. We could awkwardly get them in here, so <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. We really should automate this now that we have the robots. And our factory has hundreds of crushers at this point. So what's a few more? And this is kind of why I wanted to do just the minibus and to do a lot of handcrafting and not do stuff like this because it very quickly becomes overwhelming to the point to where you really need to have a main bus. But I don't think we're quite at the main bus yet. So I would really rather have this all set up first so we are prepared for it because if we built a main bus based on inputs like this, it would just be completely overwhelmed. And that's everything we need. So we'll come all the way back here. Copy this same chest. Plop it in there. Except now set it to crushers. And since we come through here so often, let's just get a robot zone. All right then, we've got crushers. What about the ore washing plants? Well, that's a big steel item. And actually, it looks like the robots have updated everything that could use the modules. So let's keep it going and grab more rubber ports. And there we go, we've got more to upgrade. So the ore washing is large steel frames, motors, pistons. And it's interesting looking at all these buildings where the electric crusher is very similar to the electric mixer and the ore washing plant is also very close to the electric mixer that all of these buildings more or less kind of use the same group of parts so that's a little bit of it in there well wow, it's placing those modules pretty fast but it's so nice to have machines building this for us now <laughs> so we don't have to do it on our own of course now all of the steel is disappearing again but that automates those three things. And it technically means we could make requests for them. I'm not sure if that's the kind of thing we want to have in our inventory, but we could. At least we're at that point. So now we need to find a really big place to actually plan this out. And of course it needs to be within range of the network. But this space right here is quite open. 
of course, some of the construction robots are going to probably try to help. And they're probably not going to find anywhere for these trees. Oh, well. Oh, they're so much faster now with those upgrades. Look at that. Much, much better. I think we are just fine having uh, 20 of them in our inventory. <laughs> so where are they going to take these? Because I don't think we have anywhere for them to dump stuff. Pretty much. Well, because of that, we do need to have somewhere for them to dump things. They do basically have one. Let's just put another port right there. That this would be their dump spot. And also we have a dump spot for rubber wood. So I'll put one here and of course everyone is going to try to put the stuff in. We don't want them to. So I'm going to pick that up so then that becomes not an option anymore. And plop it in there. Kind of do the same thing. Except switch it to rubber wood. Pick it up again. Plop it in that one. And here they all come. So storage chests are great for if you have a dump of resources. And uh, you don't know where to put them. But I'm actually kind of thinking maybe we should uh, cut this off now. Because it looks like we basically have the capacity to use all of our factory's wood. And also, we totally don't need these transfer plates anymore. Because you can't do transfer plates with logistics chests. Now, it is going to create the problem that it's going to make these wood chips as it makes rubber wood. We can plan for that by having it go to the right. Here's the wood chips. It won't have much of priority, but since we don't make wood chips very fast, this should work. So let's just leave the belt here for now. And we definitely don't want to have any wood in our inventory. Or any rubber wood. Of course, we'll have to be in the logistics zone for that to work, but every once in a while it should. And definitely those 100 robots are earning their keep. There are still some robots that are uh, uncomfortable, although it's just the one, because they have a uh, stone. But since we are rather close to having all the modules filled in again, Let's just keep the network going so they can go where they would prefer to. So, more modules. And now that we've gotten down here, this is where stone would go. So we'll place that. Set it to stone only. Pick it up so any robots that are coming here get interrupted. Place it back down so only the correct ones will get there. And set it to trash. Because if we ever get any ourselves, that's where we'd want it to go. And that transfer plate is no longer required. Okay, we've got junk in here, but when we pick it up, robots will come to grab it. And I kind of want this to be out of the way, so it's just not messing with us. While we are, whoops, <laughs> trying to build things. And that's the end of this episode. On the next one, we're going to make a build for our ore washing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.